integrating a UPS, or Uninterruptible Power Supply, is a simple way to add a layer of protection to your Synology NAS that is simple and affordable. With a UPS, you get the benefits of surge protection and, depending on the model you choose, voltage regulation that will keep your Synology NAS physically protected from electrical spikes and fluctuations that may occur. Another benefit, and the focus of this video, is that a UPS provides battery backup to prevent sudden loss of power to your Synology NAS, which decreases the chances of data loss and storage pool crashes. Synology provides a few resources that can help you choose a UPS that is right for you, including this knowledge base article on how to choose a suitable UPS, which I'll link to in the description below. The article covers how to calculate the total wattage of devices that you would like to have on battery backup, and includes a link to the Synology product compatibility list. Here, you can choose your Synology NAS model and select the UPS category to find a UPS that has been tested to work with your Synology NAS. In my case, I selected the APC BX1000M, which provides more than enough wattage to power my three Synology NASes that I would like to have on battery backup. I'll leave a link to the BX1000M along with a few other compatible UPSs that provide either less wattage or more wattage depending on your needs in the description below. These are also Amazon affiliate links so if you do make a purchase you'll be supporting this channel as well. One additional thing I'd like to mention is that most UPSs ship with lead acid batteries and if you fully discharge these types of batteries, you significantly decrease the lifespan and could even damage the battery. So, as you'll see in the video, I take a conservative approach in handling power outages to both protect my Synology NASes and the UPS as well. Let's get to setting things up, and the first thing to do is plug your Synology NAS into one of the battery backup plugs on the back of the UPS. Next, plug in the included USB to RJ45 UPS communications cable into the data port on the back of the UPS and into a free USB port on your Synology NAS. Once that is done, power on both devices and log on to DSM. Here, I'll go to Control Panel, then Hardware and Power. On this General tab, make sure to enable Restart Automatically when Power Supply Issue is fixed so that your Synology NAS starts up when power is restored. Next, click on the UPS tab and as we can see at the bottom of the window, the Synology NAS has already detected a UPS is connected. I'll check the box to enable UPS support and for UPS type, I'll leave it set to the USB UPS option. For info about the UPS, I'll click on device information and here we see details including the estimated battery time which in my case is 4,100 seconds or 68 minutes. I'll use this information to set up a customized time before having disk station enter standby mode. In my case, I chose a conservative time of 15 minutes to again ensure that the battery on the UPS doesn't get drained too much that it damages the battery. Another option that you may want to set up for your UPS is to enable shut down the UPS when the system enters standby mode. This option may or may not work depending on the UPS you purchase, but for the BX1000M that I'm using, this works fine and is another safeguard to protect the UPS if there is an extended power outage and other devices are connected to the UPS that can't be put in standby mode or shut down. An additional feature that is available when a UPS is connected to a Synology NAS via a USB connection is the ability to have the NAS run as a network UPS server. Here, I'll enable the UPS server feature and click on the Permitted Disk Station Devices button where I'll enter in the IP addresses of two other Synology NASes that I'd like to connect to the UPS and be able to put in standby mode when a power outage occurs. Once this is all set, I'll click OK, apply the changes I've made, and now this Synology NAS is all set up. Now I'll work on the second Synology NAS that I'd like to be protected by the UPS and I've already plugged this NAS into another battery backup outlet on the UPS. 
Then within DSM, I'll head to Control Panel, Hardware and Power, make sure that the checkbox to restart automatically when power supply issue is fixed is enabled, then switch to the UPS tab. Here I'll enable UPS support and for UPS type, I'll make sure Synology UPS server is selected and note that the information entered into the network UPS server IP address field is the IP address of the Synology NAS setup as the network UPS server. I'll then select Customize Time and taking a conservative approach once again, I'll enter 10 minutes as the time before entering standby mode, which is five minutes less than the Synology NAS set up as the network UPS server. I'll then click Apply to save the changes and now I should be able to click on the Device Information button to get info on the UPS, which also confirms that the UPS is connected properly. At this point, this Synology NAS is set up to make use of the UPS as well. Now let's see a demonstration of the setup that was just covered in action. Note that the UPS is connected to the DS718 Plus right next to it via the RJ45 to USB cable and the DS718 Plus is set up as the network UPS server as well. The DS920 Plus and DS720 Plus are connected to the UPS via the network UPS server. Also, for this demonstration, I've changed the customized time to enter standby mode to one minute for the DS920 Plus and DS720 Plus, and three minutes for the DS718 Plus. Now I'll let the video run, and I pull the plug on the UPS to have it switch to use its battery, and as I speed up the video, we can see that both the DS920 Plus and the DS720 Plus are entering in standby mode, indicated by the status light flashing green. Once in standby mode, hard drives are spun down and the NAS is completely inaccessible. Next, the DS718 Plus begins to put itself into standby mode as we see its status lights flashing green. And now that it is in standby mode, the UPS shuts itself down as well. Now I'll plug the UPS back into an electrical outlet and it powers itself back on. Also, all the Synology NASes start powering back up from standby mode and are accessible when the status lights are a solid green. The Synology NASes beep when they are back online by default as well. Note that other than the three Synology NASes, the only other device that is on battery backup is the network switch that the NASes share. This is important because if the network switch loses power, the Synology NASes won't be able to communicate with each other, particularly the two that are connected to the UPS through the network UPS server. Hopefully this video was informative and if so, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to my channel and support my work by checking out the support this channel section in the description below. Thanks so much for watching.